Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video. Back in March, I published this video entitled The Easiest Observation to Disprove Flat Earth, which covered the fact that if you view planes in the sky, either just after sunset or just before sunrise, you can often see the sun reflecting off the underside of the plane. And I explained how that can only happen if the light is coming up from below the plane's horizontal, which would prove that the sun is below the plane's horizontal and thus a globe, rather than a flat earth where the sun would be above the plane. Well, I received a lot of comments, either people trying to offer up explanations or people questioning, is that really the easiest observation? So, in this video, I'd like to address those responses and why I still think this is the easiest observation that proves the globe. Now, with respect to easiest, the criteria that I'm working with here is the observation that needs the minimal amount of effort for most people to exert in order to actually observe it, whilst having the least amount of possible explanations by a flat Earth. A few people questioned... Surely viewing ships going over the horizon is an easier observation. Well, it's certainly more established, given that people have been making that particular observation for centuries, whereas commercial planes have only been around a matter of decades. And flat earthers don't really have a tangible explanation for ships disappearing bottom up. They just misrepresent how perspective works and say that the ships are disappearing because of waves. You can check out this video I did debunking that particular idea. But in regards to the effort needed to make that observation, you have to be on the coast of a very large body of water in order to see ships disappear bottom first, and many people don't live near the coast. So for them, trying to make such an observation would require them traveling potentially hundreds of miles to reach the coast. By comparison, given the number of planes that are in the air these days, many of which fly over densely populated areas, most people can regularly see the sun lighting up the bottoms of planes without ever leaving their house. Though many people did point out that seeing the sun lighting up the bottoms of planes is much the same idea as seeing the sun lighting up the bottoms of clouds at sunset, and clouds at sunset are even more frequent than planes. However, I have seen flat earthers trying to argue that the lighting of the clouds at sunset isn't the sun lighting up the underside of them from below, but rather the light shining through them from above. So I figured using planes dispels that argument, as obviously the sunlight is not going to be passing through the metal skin of a plane. Now let's move on to some of the attempts made to explain how the bottoms of planes are lit by the sun on a flat earth. One claim is merely perspective. Putting forward the same basic logic that they use for ships disappearing bottom first, where they argue ships appear smaller the further away they go, so eventually they will become more and more obscured by waves nearby. However, as I've covered in this previous video, that is not how perspective works, because if your eye height is higher than the waves, then the waves will always be below your eye line and so wouldn't obstruct any more than the wave's own height. And with regards to that logic for planes, they argue that because the apparent height of the sun decreases with distance, then at a far enough distance away, it would appear below the plane and so lighting up the underside of it. Except I tried to demonstrate in my previous video that that doesn't work. Because if you hold a reflective object up face down above you, in no scenario can you see a reflection of a light source that is higher than that object. Or consider the inverse of it. If we could see a reflection on the bottom of an object from a light source that is higher than that object, then we should also be able to look at the top of the object and see the reflection of a light source that is below it. And yet, if you hold your phone face up, flat in front of you, you will only ever see the reflections of things that are physically higher than the phone. So, flipped over, you can only ever see things on the underside that are physically lower than the phone. Thus, seeing the sun on the underside of a plane means that the sun must be below horizontal of the plane. 
Though many people did question if this could be explained by sunlight reflecting off the ocean and lighting up the underside in that manner. It's an interesting idea, but it doesn't really fit. For starters, if this were the cause of why the sunlight appears on the bottoms of planes at sunrise and sunset, it should also happen in the middle of the day. However, it doesn't. Now, light is reflecting off the Earth and shining back up to the plane, because if light wasn't getting to the underside of the plane, then there would be no light reflecting off of it to enter our eye, so we wouldn't be able to see it, even during the day. However, that light is reflecting up from all directions, so we get a very flat, even light with no shadows. But at sunrise and sunset, we see very hard, bright light, and it creates a very hard to find shadow. There are other crucial aspects as well. Firstly, is that this observation happens the same regardless of where you are. If it were because of light reflecting off the ground, then the amount of light being reflected up to the plane would vary depending on the surface. The ocean, for example, would reflect much more light than mountains. Yet, we see the same effect regardless. The video that I captured of this happening to planes was taken whilst the plane was out over the Irish Sea. Yet, I showed a photo taken in New York that had about a half a dozen planes all being lit in the same manner at the same time across a very wide area, which means that would need to be a very large body of water to create that effect. But I was looking out north of Philadelphia. The first large body of water in that direction is 3,700 kilometers away on the opposite side of the US. There's also the big problem with how light behaves when it reflects off water. Because the surface of water is constantly moving, the shape of the surface changes, which then changes how the light is being reflected. Whenever there's even a ripple on the surface of water, you'll have bits of it which are concave and bits which are convex. This causes some of the light to be focused into brighter spots, whilst other areas the light gets dispersed. And so what we see is essentially bright lines of light dancing around. So if the planes were being lit by the light reflecting off the ocean, then the light on the bottom of the plane should be constantly flickering and dancing around. But it doesn't, which shows that the light is actually a steady, consistent stream. Plus, if it were that bright of a light being reflected off the ground, then to the people looking out of the windows in the plane, it would look as though there were two suns, one in the sky, but also one in the ground. Now, in my original video, I went over how the only hypothetical solution that I could imagine for a flat Earth would involve an incredible amount of upwards refraction, causing the sunlight to shine down in front of the plane, bend heavily around to then come up to the underside of it. And this was essentially put forward as an explanation by a few people who were citing a video by Rob Skiba who showed how he was able to illuminate the underside of an object using a lens placed between the object and the light source. However, this explanation doesn't really fit the bigger picture. The lens causes the light to refract because the light is moving between different density mediums from the air into the denser medium of glass and then back out into the less dense medium of air. And more crucially, it bends in that manner because the lens is curved. If it were a straight piece of glass like a window, then the light would leave the lens at the same angle that it entered. Plus, Rob was only able to get this effect when the light was traveling at a very shallow angle, meaning for this explanation to work, there would need to be a physical glass lens between the aircraft and the sun. So for the idea of flat Earth, that could be the firmament, but that would put the sun outside of it. But then the sun would have to be at a very low angle compared to the plane. And yet, at the time that I took the photo in New York, the sun was at noon above the South Pacific, which doesn't fit. Plus, in Rob's demonstration, we can see that the light starts off very close to the clouds. It moves back about double the distance before, from the ground perspective, it appears to set. And it then moves back about double the distance again, and the light is still visible under the clouds. So, if this demonstration were reality, 
and the sun were moving at a constant speed, we should expect to see the undersides of clouds and planes lit up for several hours after the sun has set, which isn't the case. But all of this talk about seeing direct light on the underside of the planes is meant to be an easy way to show that the sun has to be physically below the planes horizontal. Not possible on a flat Earth, easily explained on a globe as the sun moves below the horizon. Flat Earthers do like to claim perspective and vanishing points though, because as an object moves away from an observer, it will appear to move towards the center of the observer's vision. However, they fail to account for the fact that whilst it might move towards the center, at no point would it ever go past the center. So a sun with an altitude higher than the plane would never appear below the horizontal of the plane. At most, it would get very close to it. And yet we can expand on this whole observation further by not only considering the view for the observers on the ground, but also for the people in the plane. Because on the ground, the sun will have already set, but for those up in the plane, the sun is still visible, just about to set. So, based on Flat Earth's claims regarding perspective, the sun would be physically higher than the plane, so it would be above the plane's horizontal whilst the plane is in level flight. Even at extremely far distances, the sun would be physically above the horizontal of the plane, so sunlight should always be shining at a slightly downwards angle to the plane. However, a few weeks ago, I flew to Morocco, which from the UK is quite close to a straight flight south. We were sitting on the right-hand side of the plane, so we were looking out to the west, and it was an evening flight, which meant that the sun actually set whilst we were cruising. And what I noticed was as the sun was setting, the light was streaming through the windows on our side of the plane, but it was landing above the windows on the opposite side of the cabin. Now, it was a busy flight and I was surrounded by a lot of other people, so I didn't want to be intrusive. So I tried to just sneak a photo with my phone, but it didn't come out the best. But you can see the deep orange of the sunlight on the opposite side of the plane, and it is higher than the tops of the windows. Now, this was around the middle of the flight. The plane had been cruising level for about an hour beforehand, and it continued to fly level for about an hour afterwards. And the light stayed shining like that throughout the whole of sunset. So it's not like I just caught it whilst the plane was in a bank. I've even had people email me similar photos from flights they've been on, showing sunlight shining on the opposite side of the cabin above the windows. And you can test this for yourself although it will need a little bit of planning and the cost of a plane ticket, or two if you want to get back home. Take any flight that will be in the air during sunrise or sunset that flies along a mostly north-south route so that the plane is flying perpendicular to the sun. And as long as the weather is reasonable, you should be able to see the sun and the subsequent sunlight will hit above the opposite windows before the sun sets. This can only happen if the light is entering the cabin at an upwards angle, which would put the sun below the plane's horizontal, which can only happen above a flat surface if the sun is physically lower than the plane. Yet nobody has ever filmed themselves on board a plane flying directly over the sun. Yet many photographers have captured images of planes flying in front of the sun. So that's going to be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.